Hello, welcome to the Kitchen Spy. My name is Kate and this is another recipe video and this time it's the first time I've actually done a baking recipe for you. So this is for coffee and walnut cake. Uh, this version is gluten free but you can easily just use normal flour so it doesn't have to be a gluten free recipe. Uh, it's really really simple to make, um, apparently very delicious although I don't like coffee uh, which is one of the reasons I make this cake because my husband loves it and I'm not tempted to eat it. So uh, there you are. I hope this recipe finds you all well and let's have a look at the ingredients that go into making the cake. So here we go. I'll go through them now, but I'll also make sure that I list them down below in case you want to have a go at making the cake. Um, some really simple ingredients and it makes a really delicious cake. Um, so I've got here two teaspoons of cinnamon powder and then I've got two tablespoons of coffee powder or granules, depending on which you've got. It doesn't matter. I've got two eggs. I've got large eggs here and they're just beaten together. Then I've got 35 grams of chopped walnuts and then 35 grams of walnut halves and they will be going on top of the cake when it's finished. Then I've got the butter which is 125 grams of butter here. I always use salted butter in cooking but you don't have to, you can use whatever you want to. I've got 220 grams of caster sugar here and I've got 125 ml of milk, that is skimmed milk and here is the flour which is 200 grams of self-raising gluten-free flour and I always use Dove's flour which is really good and I'll also be putting some xanthan gum into uh, the mixture too. Okay and so we need a loaf tin so this is a two pound loaf tin and I've lined mine with a ready prepared cake liner. We need to preheat the oven to 160 degrees C, 320 Fahrenheit or gas mark 3. And what I'm doing here is just mixing together most of the dry ingredients. So I've got the flour here and to the flour I'm going to add the cinnamon and I'm just going to um, make sure that I sift that through. And as I said earlier, because I'm making a gluten free cake, I am actually going to add a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Now, you don't have to actually add this to Dove's flour because it already has it in it but I just feel that I get a better texture by adding that in and if you're making this with ordinary flour and you don't this need this to be a gluten free recipe then you don't have to worry about that. So yes um, I'm just adding the cinnamon in there and making a big mess <laughs> as you can see. Uh, gluten free flour seems to be more um, uh, more powdery I think than um, ordinary flour. I think because obviously it's not made from wheat, um, it's made from a combination of rice and other, other non-gluten containing ingredients so it seems a bit more aerated and loose. So we sieved those ingredients and we'll put those to one side for later after we've given them a mix. And then what we need to do is mix together the rest of the ingredients. This cake is just so simple. So in a small pan on the hob, I'm just going to add the butter. And as I said, this is um, uh, slightly salted butter, but you can add uh, no salted butter if you want to. Um, this is a butter dish which I got from a craft fair ages ago. It's got the word menin on it, and menin is Welsh. Uh, for butter and I just love that dish. I just think it's so simple and really pretty. Then we add the rest of the ingredients. So I've got the coffee powder here. So I'm just popping that in and making sure I've got everything I need there. And then I'm going to go in with the caster sugar. Just tip it all in. Uh, this is a very uh, strange way of making a cake, I think, but it works really well. Then I'm adding the milk. So this is skimmed milk, but you can use any milk you want. I've just used skimmed because that's the only milk we ever have in the house. And then we just need to make sure that all of that gets mixed together. And this takes a, a short while. I, it probably would have been quicker if I'd cut the butter into smaller pieces. 
but that's no problem. So we just, over a low heat, make sure that everything melts down. So just stirring it continuously, we get to the point where the butter is all melted and the sugar is melted too. And you can see that there are no granules on the back of the spoon. I'm just making sure that I've broken down all the coffee lumps. And to make sure I do that, I'm just gonna go in with a whisk right at the end, just to make sure that I break everything down. Um, I think if you liked coffee, um, this would probably smell very lovely at this point. <laughs> but um, I don't like coffee and so it doesn't smell good to me. But um, anyway, I, I don't want to put you off the recipe. If you like coffee, well, it, it would smell very lovely at this point. Okay, so we're just making sure everything is mixed thoroughly. And then what we're going to do is just combine the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients. You don't really need to wait for it to cool down or anything. It's perfectly fine to add it straight away. So back over in the bowl with the dry ingredients, I'm just pouring in um, our melted butter and milk and sugar and coffee. Um, and then I'm just going to mix that all together. You don't have to be particularly careful with it because we haven't aerated it anyway. We've got raisin agent in the flour and um, so we don't need to worry too much. But I am always quite gentle with cake batter. It will take a while, but eventually it will get to the point where it's quite smooth as it is here. At first it looks a bit lumpy and you think, goodness me, is this ever going to be right but it is um, and then we add the eggs so just mix in the eggs through in exactly the same way you don't need to beat it exactly but you you also don't need to be too gentle with it and then once the eggs are all together and mixed in properly we can then add the chopped walnuts so the chopped walnuts go into the cake mixture and the half walnuts go into, or sorry, onto the top of the cake. So what we're going to do shortly is put this mixture into the prepared cake tin and then we are going to pop it in the oven, first of all, for 15 minutes um, and then take it out, put the um, half walnuts on and then we're going to bake it for a further 30 minutes or until the cake is done. Okay, so we've got the prepared cake tin here. I think the only thing about using these um, prepared uh, cake liners is that they're quite difficult to keep on the edge of the cake tin as you're filling it up but just be patient and you'll get to the point where the uh, cake is the cake mixture is all in and then just level it off a little bit it will even itself out over the cooking period so that's going to go in the oven for 15 minutes and then when those 15 minutes are up we'll pop these half walnuts on top so here it is after 15 minutes. You can still feel in the in the cake tin that it's a bit wobbly, but you can actually touch the top of it. And now we're just placing the walnuts on in any kind of fashion that you want. You don't have to be too tidy about it. The reason we do this step is firstly, uh, it stops the walnuts from getting singed or burnt on the top. But secondly, because the liquid or the cake mixture is actually quite a liquid mixture, if we put them on when the cake batter was completely raw, then the cake, act, uh, sorry, the walnuts would actually sink through the mixture. So once we've got those on, then we pop it back in the oven for another 30 minutes and you just have to check because everybody's oven is different so just check on your oven how that is looking okay so after 30 minutes here it is out of the oven um, and I'm just going to test it with a skewer just to see if the skewer comes out clean so I've just got my uh, special cake skewer here and I'm just pop that in and as you can see that is perfectly clean so that cake is ready then we need to just leave it to cool down and I leave it in the tin for about 10 minutes and then take it out of the tin just to cool um, and leave it um, in the uh, wrapper for a short while and then when it's perfectly cool take it out of the wrapper and here it is all finished um, it 
it, it is a really lovely cake to make this it's so simple I've got a similar recipe to this for chocolate cake so if anyone is interested then let me know and I'll be sure to make that recipe um, so yes this is a really easy cake to make and if you like coffee and walnut cake I'm sure you'll like this in terms of calorie wise um, the whole dish is uh, quite a, an astounding amount of calories but if you got 10 slices out of this loaf each one of them would be 321 calories and I don't think that's too bad for a really nice home-baked uh, snack a real treat anyway here it is with a slice cooked and you can see that there's uh, the, the cake is nice and light inside there's lots of air in it um, and uh, it's baked all the way through so there you go I hope you like it I hope you give it a go and if you do please be sure to let me know in the comments down below it always gives me a massive thrill when someone uh, cooks something that I've made um, and um, it just um, it, it makes it all worthwhile so I'd be really interested to know if you bake it and if you do whether you liked it or not um, thanks so very much for watching if you're already a subscriber thank you very much for your support um, and if you're not a subscriber already Ready and you feel like you might want to see my recipes and food hauls and meals of the week videos then give that button a click and also the notification button so you'll know when I put up new videos which is usually on Wednesdays Fridays and Sundays anyway thanks so much for watching I hope you're all well and safe and I hope to see you here again soon take care bye bye